All right, guys, let's sip some tea. Many of you have been asking us on our Instagram about how our life in Korea differs from our life in France or in the US, and we are here to talk about just that. Disclaimer, this is only going to be our personal experience. This is not talking for everybody here in Korea, every foreigner, and especially not every black people in, in Korea. It's only us, our life. As for black the, women. In yeah, Korea. for the last uh, 20 half, Yes. <laughs> it's been a minute and we have stuff to say, so we're about to say we it. We have stuff to say, Sifty. Listen. <laughs> to know about Korea is that a lot of the judgment that people could have for you or for other people is usually based more on your overall appearance, whatever you're wearing, the way you're talking, and most of the time if you have a little bit of coins. That's not just Korea, those are a lot of countries. My country, Senegal, is also a bit similar. One other thing to note that you might already know is that uh, Korea is a homogeneous country. I don't know the statistic, but like 95 or 99% mm. of people are of Korean descent. Meaning that you're gonna come here as a foreigner, you're gonna be the minority, period. But even inside of this minority of foreigners, there's gonna be like a, a little bit of a hierarchy. White male is gonna be on top, as per usual. White female and the rest. Mm. It's basically like this, yeah? POCs. Yeah. <laughs> that is universal. It's universal, pretty much. It's It sucks, but it is what it is. There's no difference uh, based on that, however... In France, where we lived, and in America, or just in pop culture, we know that the biggest issue that black people may face is their slavery past and also their portrayal in the media as a result of this. So obviously when you come here, you face people who, even though we say, oh, their internet is so fast, how come they don't know? You have to think about that. If somebody doesn't care about an issue or they never faced it, why would they go and look for it, you know? So you come and you find people who literally see Black people only in movies as criminals, gangsters, and all that, or in the case of women, promiscuous people, etc., etc. So, if you think about the fact that they're not going to look for information just because, obviously, that's the first thing they're going to think about. Also, history wise, here in Korea, um, it's not going to be about slavery, it's more going to be about the color of your skin. Apparently, based in the Joseon dynasty, people with the lighter skin were a bit more higher in the hierarchy. So people were looking to achieve this white skin to sort of emulate this like yeah. me in the house not exactly. working in the in field. the field so not getting sun tan so people are very careful on not getting tan and stuff like this so the, the lighter your skin the better for every kind of skin color yeah. it doesn't translate to hate it's not hate it's just you know? status wise it's better oh. but that's more like back in the days i feel like it's changing a bit some people tell and then yeah. Yeah, yeah some people are going into this trend now so this is maybe changing but mm. this is the reality for most people this is like to give you a perspective of how you would be perceived as a black person as opposed to in the west so it's not like oh black person yeah. for some people it will be nowadays Obviously. so many people can be like this but in the basis of the issue it's not like oh black person so i'm like oh Huh? <laughs> it's not black people equal past slave equal immigrant. Why are you here? Mm. Go back to your country. It's not that. Mm. It's more like, oh, interesting. Why are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> why are you doing? Why do you come to Korea in particular? Like, why? <laughs> it's more interest and curiosity rather than absolute hatred. hate. Okay. Oh my God. Go back. No, it's not that. Okay. Now a little bit of a background. Why we left France? Because yes, we are not from America, obviously. We talk about America in what we know from the Western culture in general. But we're from France. We left France two years ago. We already explained in the Q and A video, so we will say this like the reason why we actually up and left. We're just talking about why we feel a bit different about how we live here rather than how we were feeling as Black women in France. And in my case in America, because I lived in America for a few years. Basically, in my personal humble opinion, <laughs> I'm not going to say I feel more accepted. I'm not going to lie, I feel more accepted. The reason why people might have a bit of a reaction to me is so different from being in France and entering an elevator and this white man looks at me and is like, Ugh, and leaves the elevator. Bit different. And yeah, it doesn't feel good. It didn't happen here to me. It might have happened to a lot of people. That's why I'm talking yeah. just about my experience. They're just like, oh, hey, 
where are you from that's literally the first question they ask you it's not like ugh, why it's more like oh okay well explain yourself <laughs> like what are you doing here so that's that so i grew up in africa in west africa in senegal and even though we had things a little bit like colorism due to colonialism we didn't really have a word for it and we didn't really pinpoint it especially because i was a child okay i didn't know but then i moved to france in 2010 we met in 2010 in freshman year and that's when i really understood the full poof effects of colorism i was hanging out with her all the time with another girl hi Anna, yes, if you want to know yes, huh? <laughs> but we were like the three the trio always walking around we had like friends in this school and not nobody was like bullying me or anything like this but i could feel the difference of treatment between how they were treating her me and the other girl knowing that the other girl was also like an ambiguous like mixed curly hair etc so i was the dark one from africa da, da, da. and you could tell like i was you know having the worst comments ever and so it's like micro aggression yeah all the time yeah it's not like oh i hate you but it's like little stuff like you're pretty for a black girl mm, i heard that so many times from black men as well <laughs> but anyways when you kind of like interiorize those things and then you arrive here where you never hear it ever and we will get into the things we do here <laughs> don't get it twisted <laughs> but you don't hear that yeah, yeah yeah so it's like i'm finally oh that is not in my life anymore unless i go on social media but i don't have to hear it in my face all the time so it was already like a <sighs> what about you for me it's pretty much the same i also grew up in uh west africa and the caribbeans so it's mainly black population over there i feel it's also because i was a child at the time as well but i didn't feel the race also i'm on the lighter part of the spectrum so even if there was colorism i wasn't the one receiving it like suffering from it so as a, as a child you just it goes over your head i honestly also felt race i became aware of my race and my situation and my mixed city mixing whatever <laughs> when i came to paris in 2010, uh, really? yeah because this is when i realized how other people were treated and i'm mm. like wait a minute why are you like this with me and now like what is going on and this is when you know yeah me personally in france i wasn't exposed directly oh actually i was never mind <laughs> i just came back the to my eyes <laughs> i don't like it mm. ah, anyway it's fine we go, we move, Ooh. we moved and we came here, right? Here also, no, I'm, I'm never, I've never, i never been insulted mm. or whatever. Nobody uh, escaped the room when I was here because of... But mm. also because, again, me, I'm not definitely the, the target of hate. Like, not you 100%. Be, it's always going to be a lot less for me than for you, for mm. sure. I didn't experience any problem here. Just people were a bit confused or when... It's the same in France, like when they ask you where you're from and you're like, I'm from France. Yeah, but where are you from? Where are you really from? Why you care? I Tell told us. you I'm from France. Why do you care? But this no. is here and this is there as well. So And this is not to say that there isn't any colorism in Asia. That's not true. We mm. all know about the whole issue of skin glitching. Mm. We all know about the fact that there is a ranking. The pale you are, the better. However, one thing that is not necessarily good, but just good for us in our everyday life is just because we're kind of not considered it's like you're foreigners you're not yeah. you don't need to be lighter like it's just asians like they they have this issue within themselves you, you're just a foreigner so yeah. it's like you're in a foreigner so you don't need to be policed about your skin tone but another asian girl would be like oh maybe you should try this product you tanned a little bit last week those are the things that they might hear so it doesn't mean it doesn't exist it exists for other people and being a foreigner in itself is another problem like it's another box over there where you are it's something else mm -hmm. but it's not based on the color of your skin it's just you're not korean yeah. period okay period. <laughs> all right so now that we've seen all of the background the big question is do you actually feel better as a black woman here in korea as a black woman, me, my <laughs> being, personally, I do. One thing that we need to really disclaim is that earlier we talked to you about how like appearance is very important in Korea, right? Your physical, like literally your face. So if you are considered conventionally to have the features that they like, I'm not talking about skin color at this point. I'm talking about literally your features. For example, me when i was in high school like i had some friends that would always be like oh you and you're like what did she call me she called me like pea head or i had like this really round small <laughs> ass head and she's like oh you and your big head and yeah, your big no, uh, your small head and your like big eyes so for me i was not really i just thought i was like some average which is i still believe i'm not like Ugh. <laughs> i'm so pretty i'm just like yeah okay i'm not ugly ugly but then i came here and not gonna lie i received the most compliment in my life in two years <laughs> it's crazy 
and i do know that it's also about novelty and the fact that you're rare but hey i'm not gonna lie the feeling is better it's better it's better to hear it. oh don't we put up if somebody says that to me every time i meet that i'm going to feel better i'm not gonna look for the reasons or whatever the bottom line mm. is that it feels nice to yeah. hear mm. it feels nice to hear mm. also a lot of foreigners if you're watching you will know if you live in korea is that because you're a foreigner and if you're considered pretty you will have some opportunities Oh yeah, in the modeling mm. life world, sometimes they're gonna be asking, they're gonna be looking for specific uh, ethnicities for their advertisement for the movies, blah blah blah. For example, in situation like France, where it's more common to have a lot of black people, white people, Arabic people, mm. and like it's a kind of melting pot. So every time they want to have some of some people of this cat group category, you're not gonna be on yeah. top of the list. So it's gonna be the top, top, top. Yeah, you got the prettiest uh, like, of super those people, thin, like yeah. body. Exactly. To... They're gonna find it. Yeah. Here in Korea, since the pool is a lot smaller, you stand out. So when they look for black people for commercial blah blah, there is a chance mm. that you might you're not pink. a model, but there is a chance yeah. you could get it yeah. because you fit whatever mm. standard they're looking for right now. So you go and you have opportunities. It's mm. nice. I'm not saying if you go professional, professional into mm. it. Mm. Maybe not because then you actually need to fit exactly yeah, yeah. what they're looking for, blah, blah blah. But like for a little bit, a little gig like on the side, beauty photo shoots, yeah, makeup, something like this. It's opportunities and yeah. it's fun to do, even if you're not necessarily gonna make your career. Some people made their career. Yeah, exactly. Some people are full on models mm -hmm. now and they're doing really well, and you know who you are, and we're rooting for you. <laughs> they're doing very well, and so it's like this is an opportunity that you may not have had mm -hmm. in Europe I would or never America. Have. Like, Personally, yeah. I would have never done any skincare gigs. If I was in France, anything, any photo shoot, any commercial, those are stuff I would never have done if I was in Paris. Yeah. Period. Like, who are you? Go, go, <laughs> move, move along. <laughs> I feel like your ego and the way you feel emotionally every day has a big chunk of, like, it has a big impact on your life. So that's why I'm saying it feels better. And I'm not saying my life is easier, but I don't have to worry about people looking at me up and down or mm -hmm. making comments. Like, no, I don't, I personally don't have that. As a black woman, right now here as me i don't feel as attacked every day it doesn't mean that there is no no issue at yeah. all yeah, there so is also the issue that they think we're all the same shade so in terms of makeup you have to do your own they can do your hair like yeah those exist but is it really different than france and america i don't think so i don't think so so it's like you get the same cons but a little bit more pros yeah so overall the feeling living here yeah. is a bit better for us at least bad. it's a bit better and also the fact that here there's like not that many foreigners, but in America, there's a bunch of us that still can't do our hair. Yeah. Come on now, like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can cut them some slack because literally they never studied Afro hair. So it's like, yeah, I'm not gonna expect you to do bantu knots on my head. But damn, mm -hmm. America? France? About the mark, the brand, this... Mm, do we say names? Mm, not, let's not be sued, name. but there what? is this one hairstylist brand. Uh. Mm -hmm. We even try to sue them, it never amounted to anything. Anyway, basically wanted to go there to what was it? Just cut, cut the our ends. ends. No, I don't do black hair. No, that's literally how they say it. We don't do no we don't touch, remember? Touch we don't touch hair. We don't touch black hair. She said we don't touch off her hair in French, that's what she said. And we tried to like go to the courts. <laughs> I can't believe we actually tried to sue. Nah, I mean, people. obviously, what? But anyway, anyway, that's friends. Like those things <laughs> happen all the time, and it's getting worse. Like these days, there's so many things. I'm not even. Uh, I can't. This is not the topic of this video, but people, chill out. Chill Calm down. Hell it's out. not that deep. And if you don't know what we're talking about, just check out the news, bro. Because things are going crazy in France. <sighs> we shouldn't have to say come to this country to be better. You should no. be better everywhere. Exactly. You should be living your life that's like but anyway, we digress. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it at least for me because my self content is a little bit more up because I don't have to hear BS every day. <laughs> I feel better overall. But what are you why are you here? You didn't say nothing. <laughs> why, why? Okay, listen. The thing is, for me, I didn't have a problem of ego back in the days as well, but it's just because I don't really care about people. <laughs> let let it like put that. it out there. I don't care what you think about me. Yeah, I was saying I wasn't really directly the target of hate mm -hmm. over there. So for me, it wasn't really that. It's just I feel like when I come here, people don't care about me as well. In a good way. They're just like you are foreigner anyway, so we have zero expectation of you. Mm -hmm. Basically. You're not getting policed. Yeah, exactly. Because I feel like for Korean experience, it's gonna be a lot different when you live here as a Korean. You you're inside of this community, and there is all this set of rules that you have to follow. Blah blah blah. Me. This community here, I'm not here, I'm here. 
So me, I can do whatever, not whatever I want, but I, I'm, as long as you follow the rules. Exactly. I like this freedom of doing what I want with my life, as long as I respect the rules. Still, I like this kind of thing that I don't necessarily get in France because, again, in France you're going to be part of this group, mm -hmm. so you're going to have those set of expectations to do, and I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. So that's why I came here. Also the food, but we don't talk about this. Oh, the food! <laughs> yeah, that's not the subject. That's not the subject. For me, it's not necessarily based on my skin color. Mm -hmm. It's more based on my overall appearance. I am not Korean. So you don't need to do what other like Korean girls yeah. would have to do. You don't have to. I don't. It's more like physically. They don't expect me to be skinny, skin, lighter. Like, exactly. They're uh -huh. just like, you're a foreigner. But like, oh. yeah, whatever. Do your <laughs> thing. <laughs> and within the foreigner, it's like, oh, but you're a pretty girl because you have big eyes. And, mm. blah, blah. and they always comment about your hair. Mm. Like, a perm? Because no. people do perm to look to yeah. have this hairstyle oh, here. No. So it's, it's so kind of like nice. It's, nice. it's yeah. like, thank you for the compliment. Mm -hmm. I take it. Overall, the feeling is good. The freedom is good, the overall perception of people is good, so... It is nice, we like our lives here, but we have to know that there's still gonna be some stereotypes that persist, that's still here. Oh yeah, so it's not all pink, you know? No, if you know a place where everything is good, please let yeah, me know. Yeah, that like, doesn't exist. Share. There's still some stereotypes about the violence, uh, like if you're black, you're associated with violence. We've seen that very recently in Pet House. Um, we don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. The criminality, yeah. the hypersexualization, oh. um, the fact that you're supposed to be able to dance and sing if you're black. And for <laughs> be good at sports. Come on, can we stop with those? Like, I can't not do sports. Body. Leave me alone. I'm I can't sing for shit. I, can't. I still <laughs> like singing though. We but like I'm not singing. A Doesn't mean we're good at it. Ah, let me be. So there is still those little stuff, yeah, that's that's thick yeah. and uh, that's not great every day but it's it's not very overwhelming yeah it's because it's everywhere but everywhere else is that plus some yeah 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 exactly. here is just things that oh but don't black people and we are all like well you don't actually know and people are like oh okay they ask you genuinely it's not like well you're black you should be able it's like well aren't you aren't black people good and it's like well first of all there are black people in so many countries <laughs> so, <Don't say> <laughs> and they actually understand and ask you mm. ask you mm. questions which is the key people literally yeah. it's not that hard people always try to not be offensive as much as yeah. possible in france you think they care <laughs> <laughs> also long term wise i don't know how it will go like for now we haven't been here for that long when you mm. think about it and if you want to settle here as a black woman if you want to have a family here i don't know how it will go honestly. yeah that we don't know. there's some some uh testimonies some people telling their stories and you're like mm. yeah it's not like we're not there yet so if you are dating somebody and you think of the future you have to think long and hard about the family and how they will receive you and the kids mm -hmm. We are going off of things that we heard a lot, mm. but I think behind the scenes, a lot of things are changing faster than yeah, we think. Hopefully. And also, I mean, if you have money, you can send <laughs> your kids to the international school to make yeah, sure that he's with other kids of the same background. We'll talk about it more when when it comes, if yeah. we have the opportunity. Uh, that's another subject, anyway. And now into the juicy stuff, let's talk about dating a bit. There's some positive, there's some negative. Let's talk about the negative Girl, part. Please don't even get me started. See, please do start. <laughs> okay, let's start with the, the, the less comfortable things mm. that don't differ from other countries. Fetishism. It's not cute. <laughs> it's not cute. So if you are on Tinder as a black girl on Tinder Korea, honey, just put your heart and put it next to you because <laughs> you don't need to put emotions into it. If you are in a body and have features and skin color that are usually associated with promiscuity and being sexy and knowing how to twerk obviously the people who talk to you on tinder you will hear the, the stupidest things like hey i like your body hey can you twerk hey you want uh, fwb a lot of foreigners will have this but as a black woman i feel like you might have a little bit of a harder time looking for someone who's not just interested in sleeping with you I mean, so you have to be very wait, careful. Tinder is for that though yeah no that's what I'm saying but like in France for example it's not really like oh this this exotic girl that I found it's not fun it's <laughs> not fun I've been on Tinder dates a couple times but overall always didn't end well none of them I had to just cut it block everything because they <laughs> cut, cut it block it, block it. <laughs> most of them are going to think about they never spoke to a black girl before so they think she's a video vixen from a nelly video and she's gonna be targeting on that hey 
Listen, yeah. we need better representation on media. But you also need to respect people. Come on. I mean, yeah. You're rare. You're rare. So they're going to see you as this opportunity of having an exclusive, exotic experience. So it's just not fun. Exotic. I hate this word anyway. Yeah. Right? We might not be the only like ethnicity to go through that. So in this case, we're all in the same team. Honey. Yeah. Like I, we see you, you see me, Oof. we see each other. But there's here. still some good stuff. No, there is. So mm, <laughs> I still prefer dating in Korea than France. Mm. I said it. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I prefer dating in Korea rather than France, even with these issues. Why? Because these issues I've also experienced in France, in America, the mm. fetish is the same. But if you're in France, for example, and you meet a guy who's actually decent, there's still going to be stereotypes in the back of his mind mm. about black girls that are going to change his behavior towards you. Now, I'm not going to get into details, but it's just, it's annoying. However, here, let's say you meet a guy who is just from his personality, doesn't really care about stereotypes, or never heard of them. I meet you and you, for, like, like literally, it. can I tell you the first time that I... I, it, I felt like being treated like just a girl mm. not a black girl, not a French girl, not a whatever just a girl that was the best feeling ever and all these girls who have that every day you better hold on <laughs> to that feeling because it's rare it's so sad as a statement but it is what it's it rare. is it's rare because friends when I, would, I had met this one guy who didn't have the same little behavior he was still like but oh but what about your hair like I prefer I prefer when you have like weave I don't like really the afro these guys don't say this because they don't know they don't know this whole thing about like afro hair weave whatever they just see your hair how it is and if he likes it he just likes it it's not always cute the thing about the hair I don't know about you but me I had people coming to me and telling me ah you have poodle hair I get that it's cute for you oh but for me you're telling me I have dog hair and I don't like it you don't have Labrador hair I don't tell you that you just have hair don't tell me I have poodle hair. Uh, then we're fine. I call my own hair poodle hair. And I don't. It's like different, so they will be like, oh, just I look like a puppy. Yeah, don't. Just tell me I'm, I'm, I look nice. I like it. Don't tell me I look like a dog. <laughs> it's I a look poodle. fine. I don't care. <sighs> it's exhausting just thinking about it. <laughs> But overall, the feeling here is better, that's for sure. It's even better when you speak the language, when you actually mm. make the effort to speak the language. Yeah, it's a new world. For you as well. Like, you understand a lot more. You yeah. feel, like, a lot more comfortable in your day-to-day -day life. Mm. That's one thing to consider. Mm -hmm. If you want to come here, make an effort in the language. Yeah. And you're good to go. Yeah, once you understand the language, even the way they interact with you is completely different. But when you go back home, you speak the language from birth. Mm. We're still not understanding each other. <laughs> it depends really on you at the end of the day on what is important to you. Personally, if you're not like messing up my business, you're not messing up my work, don't mess up my emotions and I'll be fine. I feel like I'm happier here in that aspect, even though it's not necessarily easy. I'm overall just like happier in my black womanness. I feel happier. Which is a kind of point, so we like that. Is it better to be black in Korea? Eh. To a certain extent. <laughs> there is the good answer. and there is bad everywhere, and for now it's better here. It's better, yeah. But I feel like there is still a long, long, long yeah, yeah, yeah. way to go for everybody to res just respect each other, just respect us. Exactly, just decency, human, yeah, just basic interaction. Let's let's do that. So there you have it. This is our two cents about uh, being black in Korea. It is a bit better, but don't expect it to be paradise because yeah. it's not there's still some bad stuff and some good stuff mm -hmm. as long as you're ready to do the work actually try to integrate in the culture in the culture you should be fine you're not going to be fully blended in no. but learning the language is so much it makes everything easier mm -hmm. everything but yeah it's not going to be like oh my god like you're a queen it's not going to be like this but you may not have to hear all those microaggressions all the time certain features that you may not have liked about you before might be liked here if you have big eyes and a small face hey <laughs> listen that's it really um so Hope those that. who are planning on coming to yeah. korea just try to keep those in mind and overall just be yourself like you don't really need to change yourself to be appreciated yeah. it's better to be appreciated for who you are that's the most important thing i agree and i hope you got something out of this video uh if you liked it like, share, Give a thumbs up. subscribe. Yeah, yeah share, share it to somebody if who you, needs to hear that. If you live in Korea right now, or if you had lived in Korea, can you please tell us some Your of the experience. yeah, some of what you experienced here? Because I'm quite interested to. I am curious like, about that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I really want to know if it's just us or uh, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah. thank you for watching. Until then, people, we'll see you next time. Bye.